All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Vanguard Astrodynamics VX Series Stock Alike Engines. Now this mod is being made by forum user Randazzo, and what it looks to add into the game is, well, engines. Specifically, six engines meant to both fill some specialty roles that are added in, as well as some gap fill in between two existing engines, which is quite nice. I very enjoy it, and you know me, I always love a good parts pack. So let's jump right on into the VAB and take a look at what all this has to offer. Now let's grab ourselves the Mark I command pod as usual so we can actually take a look at these with some size comparison and head down to, of course, the engine tab as once again, this is an engines pack and adds in these six lovely engines that we have at the bottom here. The first of which we're going to look at is this VX-1 yellow jacket, which is meant to be a heavy lift engine for the 1.25 meter size. Now currently for rocket engines, we have these four engines right here, which are all meant for the 1.25 meter size, and the most powerful of which I believe, oh nope, is this one here, the Reliant at 200 atmosphere and 215 vacuum. Now this yellow jacket is meant to be a heavy lift engine, so it has a much higher 325 atmosphere thrust and 350 vacuum. A pretty decent ISP at 260 atmosphere, 280 vacuum, uh, but does use a fair amount of fuel at a little bit over 11 per second on the liquid fuel and 14 per second on the oxidizer. Of course, it does have some gimbling and, as usual, electric charge, alternator, all that sort of thing. And here is the engine. Beautiful little design. I quite enjoy the modeling on not only this one, but all of these engines. They are very well done on the models. Texturing, though, eh, yeah. They could use a little bit of work still. For lack of a better word, they could just use some more texture to them. I mean, they just look so flat in the colors, but the models themselves I really like, very stock alike in their design. And if they just had slightly better textures, I think they'd fit in very, very well with any of these existing stock engines. Very nice design to them indeed. I quite enjoy them. And so, yes, that is the Yellow Jacket, the first of our engines here. The second of which is this lovely VX-6 Lander Spike. Now, this one is meant to be used on a lander for an atmospheric planet. And it's quite cool. It is, of course, an aerospike engine here. It does have a pretty good thrust at 109 atmosphere, 120 vacuum, ISP of 300 atmosphere, 330 vacuum, uses quite a lot less fuel at 3.3 per second liquid and four, roughly, per second on the oxidizer. Does have gimbling, of course, and produces five electrical charge per second. And what's really fun about this thing is it has this shrouded housing on the outside, which is capable of being an attachment point for other objects, which is why it is perfect for a lander that is going to an atmospheric planet, because you can pop the legs right onto the side here or any other, you know, ladders, batteries, whatever you so desire. A very cool, very useful shrouded aerospike. I quite enjoy this little thing. So let's drop these back to the engine tab and take a look at two engines which are meant purely for orbital operations. The first one here is the VX-01 Impulse, and this is purely a orbital engine. This one is, of course, for the 1.25 meter variety. Again, a very cool modeling on it. Texturing, same as the others so far, but very, very cool design to it, very nice looking engine. And this particular one is extraordinarily efficient in vacuum, but absolutely useless in atmosphere. As you can see here, the thrust for atmosphere is point, point six. <laughs> Vacuum thrust is 50, and its ISP equally is only 5 in atmosphere, but 395 in vacuum. It also does sip fuel at 1.16 per second liquid, 1.42 per second oxidizer, and yeah, a very, very useful engine for, say, satellites or any orbital maneuverings that you have, perhaps attach it to a you know, probe heading out into space somewhere. Very, very nice design, but again, 
purely for being out in space. Atmosphere, this thing is just completely useless. And then along the same vein, we have a larger version of it in the VX-02, which fits the 2.5 meter variety. Again, it's the sort of same model, uh, very nice looking design, just sort of, uh, you know, upsized to 2.5 meters. And this one for thrust, it has 1.6 for atmosphere, 130 for vacuum. 5 ISP in atmosphere, 395 in vacuum, and uses 3 roughly per second on the liquid fuel, 3.69 per second on the oxidizer. Again, as with the other engines so far, a nice little bit of gimbling. Very, very cool little engine, but uh, yeah, uh, once more, completely useless in atmosphere. Don't even try, it will just sit there on the landing pad but a fun little engine nonetheless. Now the next one is a big boy. This is meant for, again, the 2.5 meter variety. And this, the VX-C9 Constellation, is meant to be a gap filler in between the skipper and the main cell engine. It's supposed to fit nicely in between these two, so if you have a roll for there, it is quite useful indeed. And its thrust is quite nice at 966 atmosphere, 1050 in vacuum, engine ISP of 290 atmosphere, 315 vacuum, and does use quite a bit of fuel at 30.59 per second liquid and 37.39 per second oxidizer. Of course, gimbling, electric charge, all the usuals, again, very cool modeling, texturing that just needs a tiny bit extra work. I do like the nameplate on it though, very cool little addition indeed, and a quite interesting engine, and oh dear god, it is fun. I, I've been enjoying this engine so far, playing around with it, because yeah, sometimes you don't need a mainsail, but you need something bigger than a skipper, so it is nice to have this in-between stage engine. Very nice indeed. Now the last one is, well, the Vadul, which... I, I don't, it's, it's not a, it's not a VX series, so I don't know why they named it this. But yes, the official name is Vad Duel, uh, but in here it's the Vad Ultralight engine, and this baby is tiny. It is meant to be uh, basically a companion engine of sorts to the 48-7S. It is a very, very tiny little engine here, and has fairly similar stats to this engine, but at half the mass. And this thing will produce nine atmosphere in, or nine thrust in atmosphere, 15 in vacuum. It's ISP of 230 atmosphere, 360 vacuum, and sips fuel at 0.382 per second liquid, and four, or 0.467 per second oxidizer, vectoring with the gimbal, all that as usual. Very cool. It is half the mass, as I mentioned, of the 48-7S. But at the same time, as a trade-off to that, it's also very, very fragile. You can see the crash tolerance is only 4 meters per second. So this thing, not really meant to be used for like a tiny probe lander. It's more meant for a tiny probe to go around a planet. Very cool little engine, though. I quite enjoy it. Now, I've set up a couple of uh, little demonstration crafts to show these engines off. The first of which we'll do is the VX-1 test. And this is a fun little ship I designed earlier, which has our VX-1 in here, the yellow jacket, comparing it to its sort of counterpart down here, which actually I realized when we were looking at things that the Reliant is the more true counterpart uh, to this engine as this mainsail or heavy lift engine is meant to be the next step up from it. So let's just switch that out and go to launch to sort of show off the difference in power between these two. And I gotta say, there is one hell of a difference. All right, let's just throttle straight up and three, two, one. Wait, hold on. Why is Bill in here? Oh, Jebediah's in space. I have another ship set up there to show off of those, uh, space only engines so uh yeah we'll go meet jebediah in a moment but let's launch this in three two one go oh forgot to disconnect from the uh struts there and there we go this is the you know standard engine the reliant going quite at a nice little pace you'll all will notice this pace from many of your early rockets out of fuel and then boom this little heavy lift engine kicks in and we just go flying into space up to a thousand meters per second. It's going to destroy our parachute, most likely destroy our craft with heat. But yes, you notice there on the second stage of the, the this launch, 
just how much more power this baby had. Let's actually revert that flight to launch one more time because I was kind of talking over the sound. That just huge boom that this baby has. So let's actually decouple it from here. And let's activate this engine. There we go. Throttle up. Ah, uh, just listen to that bass. And let's disconnect. And just look at how quickly this thing shoots up. It is insane. A very cool little heavy lift rocket edition. I quite like it because I've always wanted a more powerful rocket in the 1.25 meter size. So that is very nice. Now let's head back to the vehicle assembly building and check out the next ship that I made, which is... Uh, the VX-6. Yes, this is the lander spike, so let's load this one up. Uh, just a simple, small little craft, but let's load it. And see the sound effects, particle flames, and of course the speed of this engine. Now again, this one's meant to be sort of an engine designed for your landers. So let's throttle up, and boom! There we go. Pretty much, uh, you know, same old, same old sort of particle effect and sound to it. Not as much bass as that previous one, though, again, that is a heavy lift engine. Uh, but this one, a very, very nice lander engine design. I do just love the flush design to it. It's, it's very cool. It makes me happy for the possible aesthetics of landers that I could make in the future. But a very nice engine. Gets us up to a pretty good speed. Pretty decent fuel usage as well, and there we go. We are, of course, out. Spin, and then let's leave. Revert flight. Head back. I believe I have one more to show you before we go to space. Maybe two. Hold on a moment. VX1, yes, we did that. Ah, uh, yes, so we only have one more here. Oh, no, two more. The Vagual. Let's actually look at this little baby first. It is a tiny, tiny little ship. Again, a very small little engine made for tiny little probes. Uh, but quite a good little engine, honestly. In uh, atmosphere down here, with this tiny little ship, it actually functions pretty well. Let's throttle it up and away. Yeah, pretty much... Uh not exactly the most forceful or impressive engine ever, but very, very useful for your tiny little probes. Again, meant to be a sort of half mass replacement to the 48-7S, so that you have slightly more efficient probes. I quite enjoy having this little engine, a very cool indeed, and the design. I don't know if I pointed it out in there, but very, very cool. I like it quite a bit. That is enough of that engine. We have one more to look at, and then space. So let us have a gander. Yes, the VX-C9, the Constellation engine. Oh, and this one's fun. This is <laughs> this is a big engine for such a small craft. It actually explodes this ship if it goes for too long. But just to show off of the engine a little here, again, it is meant to be a middle ground in between the skipper and the mainsail for the 2.5 meter size engine. Let's throw it all the way up and go to Bill Kerman's death as this goes fast, quite fast. Almost up to 500, and there we go. Excellent. Keep on going. There's the heat effects. Bill's getting worried. And boom, there we go. <laughs> oh, poor Bill. Yeah, that little ship's not meant to have that big of an engine. Let's revert flight to the vehicle assembly building. <laughs> and Bill is magically alive again. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? All right, so let's go over to the tracking station where we can check out one ship that I've built to take a look at both the regular VX-1 impulse engine as well as the VX-02 big impulse engine. So let's just launch to that. And again, these two engines are entirely useless in atmosphere. They are only meant for being in space. Now the first one is the VX-01. It is the 1.25 meter variety of this engine. So let's just throttle it up. And there we go. A very, very high efficiency, uh, kind of, actually kind of decent thrust power to it. Good for orbital maneuvering. And uh, quite a nice little engine. I do enjoy it. So we'll slowly but surely raise our apoapsis on this with this smaller size engine. Very nice, though. Very good little effects. Pretty uh, standard on the particles and the sounds, but nonetheless a useful engine. But let's cut that one. Oh, no, meant to 
Oh, God, cut. There we go. Why do I always hit the wrong keys? <laughs> and let's release that and use the larger vessel. And, of course, explode those. We don't need them anymore. What the hell? There we go. And, yeah, just basically a larger version, though kind of amusing. Same size particle effects as the tiny one for this much larger engine size. It's twice the size, but same particle effects. Uh, but again, actually, this has a very similar thrust to the smaller model, so I guess that does make sense. It's just built for the larger engine design. But quite fun, quite good. I do enjoy these engines, and wow, look at that apoapsis go. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. But yes, that is going to be it for this particular episode. If you would like to try out any of these engines for yourself, you can check the link in the description to uh, go and download this VX series engine pack for yourself, and I would definitely say to go and do it. It is a cool little set of engines. I am just following in love with them. I love the yellow jacket. I love the lander spike. These impulse engines are pretty cool. The constellation, I just love having that middle ground between the skipper and mainsail. Honestly, probably won't use the VAD much, but, you know, I'll probably find a use for it at some stage in the future. But yes, do go check it out. Hopefully you have fun with it. And if you build a cool ship design with these engines, I would love to see it. Tweet me a picture. And yes, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today. And of course, you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one. I don't know why I decided to spin Jeb around, but I'm sure he's loving it in there. It is Jebediah, after all. Later, folks.